All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And so I put this event together last year to make sure that I was introducing myself to the students because a lot of times um, prior to this year, I wasn't interacting very often with students unless they were heavily involved in our student club that I'll talk about or they just happened to schedule a meeting with me to chat to where students would not know who I was until junior year when they got to um, the first class that they took with me. And sometimes they would be uh, somewhat caught off guard by uh, maybe the requirements to become a dietitian and what was expected of them in this program and what's expected of them in the future. And so I created this event last year to help kind of nip any of those things in the bud to where students are extremely informed and understand what they're doing in this major, in this concentration, and understand what's expected of them so that maybe if I don't see you again um, for a year or two as you're going through your entry level classes, uh, you will have a good idea of what you should be working on so that when you do get to my classes in uh, around junior year, you could be successful in those by having some experience under your belt. So I am Dr. Erin McKinley. I have my PhD uh, in health education and health promotion. I am a registered dietitian about nine years now, licensed in the state of Louisiana. And I'm also a certified lactation counselor since 2014, a certified health education specialist for the last five years. And then as of May of this year, I am a fellow of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is an advanced recognition for dietitians have, who have gone above and beyond um, in their practice and in their line of work and were available for this type of award um, and recognition after being an RD for about five or seven years. I can't remember exactly uh, when I qualified, but I got that this year. So I am an assistant professor here at LSU. I've been here a little over four and a half years. I do direct the dietetics program in addition to also directing our on-campus master's and PhD programs in nutrition and food science. I am located in Knapp Hall up on the second floor in 285. If you haven't been to Knapp Hall yet, we are on what I call the ag side of campus. So kind of close to Parker Coliseum um, as you're kind of going towards um, down Highland, kind of away from campus towards where like Walgreens and CVS are on that corner over on Lee going in that direction. And so we're slightly off the corner of Highland and South Stadium. And so if you ever need to come by for advising or for a meeting, that's where I am. I'm usually in my office throughout the week. I definitely always have office hours every Friday from 1.30 to 3.30 that I'll definitely be in here. But if anything changes, I always have a sign on my door. And if I'm not available in the office, I can certainly do Zoom calls outside of different hours um, in, in, my, in between my schedule um, if I'm able to jump on a Zoom call at that time. So I've also included my office number and my LSU email that's shorter. And so I do have two email addresses, one that's lsu.edu and the other one's agcenter.lsu.edu. Uh, they both filter into the same email box. I have both because I technically work for both the Ag Center and the campus side, uh, university side of LSU. And so since Nap Hall is an Ag Center building and we have Ag Center computers, that's the email that I use. And so I like to give the shorter one because it's a little bit easier to remember. And then if you want to follow me on social media, uh, Dr. Erin McKinley on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and then if you search Dr. Erin McKinley uh, in YouTube and then in LinkedIn, I'm also located on there as well. All right, so a little bit more about me since this is a meet the director. And so I feel it's important that the students know who I am, where I've come from, where I've gained a lot of the experience and knowledge that I have about this profession and life in general, and to just kind of make sure that we build and continue the family-like environment uh, that LSU Dietetics is. You are surrounded around the same people for three or four years and you become a close-knit group with your class. And the longer that you're exposed to me, the closer we become um, as faculty and student. And so I really like students to, to get to know me a little bit. So I'm originally from Rhode Island. I don't think I have an accent, but people are usually confused as to where I may be from. And so I'm from Woonsocket. I was born there, grew up in the next town over. Uh, 
split my time between uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Rhode Island as a child, just because my parents, uh, their sole home was Las Vegas. So eventually we had purchased a home there and we split our time between those two places as my sister was a student at UNLV back in the 90s. And so when it came time to do my undergrad, this was not my first choice as a career. I didn't even know what a registered dietitian was uh, back in 2001 when I was starting college. And I went to Methodist University, which is in Fayetteville, North Carolina. It's about a stone's throw from Fort Bragg. And so about three weeks after I started my freshman year, 9-11 happened. And so I spent the three and a half years that I was in my undergrad in a very interesting environment uh, next, to a, next to a military base that was constantly under threat of, of something happening. And so very interesting times, uh, especially pre-social media and when even websites and the internet was still kind of new to folks. And so interesting times. And so I have my bachelor's degree in both business administration and marketing. Methodist has a really great hospitality-based business school. And that was more of what I was thinking of going into since I knew I was going to end up in Las Vegas after I graduated. And so I did do that. I graduated early and bounced off to Las Vegas at 21 years old and worked in casino gaming and hospitality for about six or seven years in different capacities, had to work my way up in different ways. Um, I had to start at the bottom with regard to the casino business and, le and learned what that, that is like. Um, and it's very similar as far as skill sets go between different professions. So I think that that really helped me kind of put my worldview together on some of those entry level skills that everybody should have to be successful in certain, in certain industries where we're working with people. And so I worked at strip casinos, downtown casinos, um, up and down uh, Las Vegas Boulevard. And so I uh, gained a lot of experience from counting the money and um, dealing with kind of table games and chips on through um, retail, through marketing, on up to operations, and then into executive level management when I was about 24. And um, that's what I thought I was going to do. And then the recession of 2008 hit, and it was not a good time to be in the business of taking people's money when they did not have money to spend. And so that's when I started to think about what I might do with my life. And around that same time, I was having my own personal health issues where I felt like I wasn't getting, not that I wasn't getting the proper care. I just thought there was more information that I should know about how to deal with my situation uh, with regard to nutrition and started kind of looking into who are the folks that I'm supposed to be seeking out to seek treatment from and being in a state where uh, herbal medicine and alternative and complementary medicine is very popular. Those were the individuals I was exposed to first and took enough law classes in business school to really question if what they were telling me was legal and if they were the actual people that were allowed to tell me that. Uh, I was convinced when I wasn't seeing letters after people's names that they probably weren't the ones I should be taking this advice from. And so I started searching and that's how I discovered what a registered dietitian was, started looking into that and it all started to make sense where I felt like that was the direction that I wanted to go in, uh, not just to help myself, but to start to help other people, um, maybe avoid some of the pitfalls that I, I went through in my own illnesses. Um, I had several that affect, uh, nutrition has a large effect on uh, growing up and so really started to look into that. So wasn't sure the path that someone takes to become a dietitian. It can be quite confusing. And so I had no idea what I was doing when I got into this. And so when I have students come in with the same questions, I get it. It can be confusing. And, and um, the way it's laid out sometimes on, on certain websites isn't always super clear. And so I can empathize with those students that are career changers, changing their major kind of late in, late in the game, but really want to make sure they're making the right choice. And so I can certainly um, relate to students in that regard. And so long story short, I ended up at the University of Alabama uh, because, honestly, because they would take me. And so uh, being from a business school background, I did not come from a hard science background. And so they were willing to work with me as I started taking master's classes. And I actually went back and took all of the undergraduate 
chemistry, bios, all the things that are in very similar classes in, as the LSU curriculum, and then all of the DPD nutrition courses at the same time. And I was able to qualify for their coordinated uh, program, which is their own in-house internship for just their students. Uh, I was able to qualify for that and get that done and my master's done in three and a half years, which is quite a long time. But when you take into consideration the fact that I had to take about two years of undergrad classes at the same time actually wasn't that bad uh, looking back. And so I did do research for my master's and the two faculty mentors that I had saw potential in me with regard to that, seeing that I, it came naturally and that I was good at, at keeping things organized. And um, when it comes to research, there's a lot of things with ethical guidelines, legal guidelines, and I was able to kind of really catch on to that stuff quick. And there just happened to be a teaching assistant, uh, assistantship position that opened uh, as someone, as I was graduating my master's, one of my old TAs was finishing her PhD. And so they offered me her position, which allowed me to stay at Alabama for another four years, uh, work on my PhD. I, get, I started to teach right away, taught my own classes, didn't have to um, like TA with another faculty member. Um, if I did, it was just to learn how to teach certain classes um, that I maybe didn't take um, as a student. And so I finished my PhD in 2017. And so through my time at Alabama, I wanted to make sure that I was gaining good experience. Granted, no one explained to me what kind of experience I should be getting uh, to become an intern and a successful dietitian. And so I went naturally, I gravitated towards things I already knew how to do. And at that time, and still to this day, uh, football is the biggest game in town there. And I literally went and hit a buzzer on an office at Bryant-Denny Stadium and was like, hey, can I talk to somebody about you know, potentially working here. Here's my background. And they looked at me like I was crazy. But then at the same time, they were like, where did you come from? You're amazing. Uh, we need somebody that has this level of experience to help us manage some of these things. And so I ended up um, throughout my master's being a um, hospitality manager at Bryant-Denny Stadium and then Pullman Coliseum for basketball and gymnastics. And then of course, all through football and then a little bit of softball. Um, the year they won the championship. And then I stopped. I just wanted to make sure I went out on a good note with softball. And so when I started my PhD, I was doing that for another year or so while I was teaching and was managing it all pretty well, and then stopped to focus on getting my research done so I could graduate. And so I did not get a job until about six months after I graduated, which is, um, wasn't fun at the time, but um, I got the job here at LSU. And I started in March of 2018. I was brought in quite quickly because our previous DPD director had retired and we were up for reaccreditation that year. So I had to come in and learn the ropes and get us ready for that quite quickly. But that's kind of the stuff I'm good at. So that came really naturally for me to come into a high stress situation and be able to manage it. And so I teach several classes uh, throughout the year and some are consistent, some are kind of random. And so every fall I teach NFS 3025, which is usually taken junior, sometimes senior year, depending on when someone came in the major. Um, it's the professional and professionalism and dietetics class. And that is the class that gets students prepared for applying for the next step of the process to become a dietitian, um, a master's and uh, internship slash supervised practice, which I will talk a lot more about in a second. And then each spring, I teach the community nutrition class. And then randomly, like this semester, I just happened to be teaching the intro class. Uh, we needed someone to cover that. Uh, we hired someone new, but the classes we needed her to teach were overlapped. So I decided to take on the opportunity since I had never taught any students below the junior level before. So, so far, very fun. And then every once in a while, I will teach our 4021 seminar class, which is taken by all of the students in our program, except food science students. Um, it's just a one credit seminar where you work on your presentation skills. And then I also at times um, teach the graduate seminar. Since I am director of that program, we alternate year to year on who teaches that. And so I do also do research as a tenure track faculty member. All of my research is in the area of infant feeding, mostly surrounding um, creating survey scales to measure psychological aspects related to decision making about infant feeding among pregnant people. It's a lot, but it's very, very interesting. Um, I like to ask people questions and um, 
I like to show the scientific community that even when you think there are no questions left to ask, there are more questions to ask because the world is ever changing. So trust I'm having a field day with this uh, formula shortage as far as much more questions to ask people and how that's affecting them. And then obviously direct the day-to-day -day activities of the grad program and the DVD program. So I feel like I have four different jobs. And so I always tell students, um, you know, don't be afraid to shoot me an email. If I told you I would do something for you and I forgot, just nudge me. If I didn't write it down, I might forget. Um, sometimes I forget to flag emails. I usually check emails real fast on my phone uh, in between classes, in between meetings, and I'll flag them to go back to when I can sit down and concentrate. And sometimes I think I did it and I really didn't. And then three or four days go by and students are like, hey, where are you? And it's like, oh, sorry. So don't be afraid to nudge me um, nicely to remind me if I needed to do something for you or if we needed to get on the schedule uh, for a meeting, anything like that. If you're watching this uh, video at home, certainly feel free to email me questions as you watch the video. So just kind of going into a little bit about the profession, just so y'all have an understanding of what uh, what is ahead and if you're in the right place or because um, a lot of students I found when I first got here at LSU, I was obviously was encountering them junior year, sometimes senior year. And there was a lot of miscommunication, a lot of misunderstanding about the process to become a dietitian and maybe what was um, expected along the way. There were students that had no idea there was stuff to be done after leaving LSU. Uh, I find that hard to believe, but at the same time, it's always possible. And so before I get into that, that journey to the RD, I get a lot of questions from especially those that come to see me while they're still in high school and they come with their parents. It's what kind of dietitian can I be? And I like to kind of say, you can be any dietitian that you want to be. It's really like the world is your oyster, choose your own adventure. If having that credential after your name is like the first step that solidifies you as the expert in nutrition, and then I like to tell students, take something else or other things in your life that you like, that bring you joy, that you want to do, and see how you can mold that together with nutrition to create something that can create you income. I have found over the years that a lot of our alumni have created uh, different private practices with different angles to them, depending on their interest area. Uh, we have one that's like strictly plant-based and likes to work with those who are, are vegan or are going in a plant-based direction, um, especially if there's um, that aspect of any chronic disease that's been diagnosed. Um, I also have folks that may be more in other types of um, disease directions. Um, it's really, it's whatever you want to do. Um, I have found that students sometimes expect myself or the faculty here in the dietetics program to kind of tell them what kind of dietitian they're going to be. And that's not fun to be told. Um, I want to make sure that the students are doing things that they would like to do. And so the only way to really find out while you're still an undergrad, what RDs are doing or is to start finding out. And so shadowing dietitians and starting to see what different types do not only allows you to see what their day to day is like, and to see if you like that. But most importantly, it's to see what you don't like. I would rather students make that decision or come to that conclusion about things they're just not big on while they're still with us so that they don't make the mistake of leaving and going off to a graduate program and a supervised practice program that specializes in that area. And you have to do you know, more concentrated hours of your supervised practice time doing that thing you don't want to do. Um, or you end up getting your first job in an area that you hate and you, know, you quickly want to vacate that. Um, and so the sooner you can kind of figure out what you like, what you don't like, you don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be set in stone. It's going to change over time. It's going to change with every class that you take with us as you start to see the different topics that you like and you don't like. And so really just kind of keep in mind that you, you have that freedom once you have the RD credential in hand. And so one question I don't answer when uh, students ask, or especially when parents come in, um, anything about salary. It's very difficult to answer those questions because for those watching this video and those live, it's gonna be many years before you're out in the market looking for a job. And so we don't know what the economy is going to be like, what the profession is going to be like two days from now, let alone two, three, four, five, six years from now. 
And so it's very difficult to, to make any sort of guarantee. And I would never guarantee anything because that's, it's just impossible. And so there are websites that are out there. If you Google like registered dietitian, average salary, there's different things on the Academy website that kind of give you like a ballpark idea of what you could be looking at as a starting salary. And then maybe what a median salary would be five, 10, 15 years down the line. Um, but you have to take into consideration if it's a number that's US wide, there are dietitians in one, like there are dietitians in Alabama versus dietitians in Washington state that do the same exact job. And the ones in Washington state make 25% more because the cost of living is more expensive up there. There's a big difference even in pay scale between Alabama and here in Louisiana. Um, I think I make about 20% more than the average starting professor here at LSU than I would if I had stayed in Alabama. And so it's, there's a lot of things that go into that equation of what you could possibly make. It also depends on the type of facility, how big that facility is, uh, who owns that facility. The more small private, private facilities that do more expensive business, such as like neurology, things like that, they might, they might pay their dietitians a little bit more than the public hospital, like a Baton Rouge General, that is a little bit of everything. That, and there's six, seven, eight dietitians on staff instead of one. And so there's a lot of factors that go into that. So I like to say, don't stress about that at all. Uh, you will be rewarded for the, your hard work, uh, so to speak. Um, it just kind of depends on what things look like when it comes time to, to get ready for that. And then just some examples of the different types of RD jobs that are out there. I've kind of had this up for a little while, but um, these are, someone asked me to actually make a list one day because I, every time they would ask me off the cuff, I would say like the same two over and over again. But these are different jobs that I've seen people have, friends of mine, alumni of ours, uh, people in my network, local and nationwide. There's a lot of things that people can be doing outside that traditional clinical in a hospital or food service in a hospital or uh, working with you know, state agencies like WIC or snap -Ed or SNAP or FNEP and, and the different um, public assistance programs. There's a lot more that you can do. There's more on this slide. There's no shortage of, of things that are being done. And then there's gonna be this continuance of new things popping up as different industries related to food and nutrition, different um, companies, other medical professionals, they start to see our value more and more, they'll start to figure out how to utilize us more and more. So I remember when I was finishing up my master's, that was the boom of grocery store dietitians. That was the new thing. I'm starting to see uh, lately, then I think the next boom besides private practice is working with health insurance companies. And uh, health insurance companies are working harder to, to work with their clientele to make sure they're not spending as much money on their healthcare with regard to, um, going to the doctor, not so much what they're paying the health insurance for to have that insurance, it's the usage thereof. And so they will hire dietitians to work uh, with individuals to kind of make sure that they're um, not just eating healthy, but living healthy, keeping up with appointments. And so dietitians are being brought in for their expertise in wellness to really um, build wellness plans for um, individuals that are part of different healthcare companies so that the healthcare companies are saving money on payouts to medical facilities. So I think that's the next big boom. Um, in addition to more tech oriented things, um, apps, taking things that we're doing on paper now as dietitians and turning them into something that can be done electronically and not just done electronically, but like easier, faster, um, more accessible, more accessible for disability, more accessible for a lot of things. I feel like I'm kind of looking forward to what new thing people are going to come up with that's going to take off and a lot of people are going to want to do uh, since there's, there's lots of opportunities since every state has a lot of the same things as far as um, schools and um, assistance programs, grocery stores, certain different types of facilities to where if someone's doing it in California, good chance we can do it down here because we have something similar. We just have to make it our own. All right, so the road to RD slash RDN, the RD slash RDN credential is the same. We get to choose what letters we wanna use. It means the same exact thing. The N stands for nutritionist. If someone wants to use that, 
um, if they have more of a practice that works with the community, nutritionist is um, a softer word. Dietitian is a harder word uh, with regard to when people hear dietitian, they think sick diet. I don't need help. Nutritionist, it's like, ah, oh, they're going to teach me how to eat. And so I give a long lecture about that in 3025 about how to choose <laughs> which one that you want to use. But to sit for the RD exam, which is like the end of the road is taking that RD exam so you can get your credential. And so the journey to get there has multiple parts. The first is getting that four-year bachelor's degree and completing a DPD program. So if you're here at LSU, you're doing the DPD concentration, you're doing a dietetics concentration, which is the DPD and getting your bachelor's in nutrition and food science, or if you're double majoring or however that's getting done, you're getting those first two steps done. And so you will leave LSU with what's called a verification statement. It's almost as important as your uh, diploma and final transcript from here, as that is what I like to call your golden ticket to move on to the next part of the process. The verification statement shows the school and supervised practice progr program that you go on to next, that you kind of finish checkpoint one with a DPD program. You passed everything with the minimum score that you needed to, you got the grades you needed to, you qualify to go on to the next step. And so that next step is to obtain a master's degree and do supervised practice slash dietetic internship. We use those terms interchangeably now. Um, dietetic internship is the older term, but when people think internship, they think um, like something I do over the summer at my uncle's business. And it's not like that. It's a lot more complicated. It's, it's like going to medical school, but it's a lot shorter if you want to think about that. So it's kind of like pre-med to med school, DPD to supervised practice, like pre-dietetics into dietetics um, training, so to speak. And so you're required to do a thousand hours of supervised practice, hands-on, on-site. I say hands-on, it's on-site. Some of it might be hands-on, where you are working with preceptors in the different areas of nutrition, the three major areas, clinical, food service, and community. Each program is a little bit different to where they'll have those three components, but then they might have other components uh, depending on what that school might specialize in. So they might have as a required part of their program that you do a pediatric rotation or a sports rotation or a diabetes clinic, diabetes camp with little ones or young ones. Um, each program kind of uses what's available in their area to uh, make sure they're helping people and then to make sure they're giving their interns variety. And they also use that as marketing to get folks to come to their program. If there's something that a certain student wants to make sure they get experience in, they might be geared to go towards that particular program for that you know, set of hours that's going to give them some training because they want to do that exact specialty right when they're done um, and become an, like after they're done with the RD exam. That's what they want their first job to be. And so the, uh, there are no exceptions to the master's degree. And so technically the rule doesn't kick in until January of 2024, but everybody that is here at LSU, it's too late. Uh, even my, my seniors are mad. They are the first year that have to, uh, to go through this where they have no other option because they would not finish any program. Even though they graduated in May, they would not be able to get anything done in six months to be able to pass the RD exam without a master's degree. And so starting with this senior class, uh, the training has changed to where we are focused on making sure that they are not just viable for internships and supervised practice, but they're also viable for grad school, which can be uh, a little bit different because grad school a lot of the times is more GPA based than sometimes the internships are. And so if you are watching this, hearing this and graduate school, having to continue on in school after LSU is a huge deal breaker for you. You just won't do it. You can't do it. That You might want to think about having a discussion with me to, to find out if there's something else you might want to do. doesn't mean you have to leave the major. There's options, but um, I want to make sure that if that's not part of your plan, is there another concentration that would make more sense? And so that's really up to you, but it is, it is a thing that um, I think students kind of look at me like it's my fault. It's not an LSU thing. It's this is a national thing with the uh, Commission on Dietetic Registration. They made this decision. They control everything with regard to the credential. So um, we are just following the rules as set uh, so that we can stay accredited. And we support that decision in that we will make sure that our students are fully prepared for the next step, however that looks for them. 
common question I get with regard to the internship uh, supervised practice piece. Um, new questions are coming up every day from the senior class, which is great. And so the, the ones recently, um, how long is it gonna take after I leave LSU? Every program is a little bit different. So there's no definitive answer on that. It could be as short as one year. It could be as long as two years plus. Sometimes the length of a program is kind of predicated by the graduate program that is housing that internship in their grad program. If it was naturally a long master's to begin with, and then they're adding the supervised practice component in, that adds length to it. And, and they might not want to sacrifice the quality of the grad program um, by fast tracking it in any way. So it still might be two or two and a half years, uh, which is kind of a long time in this, in this whole thing. There are newer programs that are popping up every day, it seems like, that are one-year fast-track masters and, and supervised practice programs. That is very, very fast. Um, I think a year and a half for just a master's is, is the sweet spot, about 18 to 19 months for um, when you add in an internship with that, I think is, is doable. I've seen it, and people will be very successful with that. Um, I'm still a little skeptical of these one-year programs. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing some of their success rate um, with graduates this next year and how they're passing the RD exam and getting jobs, because uh, that is how we judge good programs, their ability to do that. And so um, fast-tracking someone through a 30-hour master's degree and then expecting the, the thousand hours of supervised practice, that's just a lot to do in one year, um, depending on your situation in your life and, and, and whatnot. And so, yeah, anywhere from a year to uh, to two plus, but 16 to 18 months is it's kind of that that sweet spot that programs are trying to stay within to where it's not that much of a big chunk of your life after you're done uh, with your undergrad. The next uh, common question that I've been getting lately, can I go and do my master's first and then go do the internship or do I have to do it together at the same time? You can do it together at the same time. A lot of programs are set up like that. But I encourage our students that a lot of those combo programs are masters in nutrition or masters in dietetics, insert some other word for nutrition or dietetics. And so the nice thing about the rule about having a master's degree is that it can be in anything. It doesn't have to be in nutrition and dietetics. Naturally, the, the programs are going to be creating nutrition and dietetics focus masters. But if someone is really interested in going to get something more exercise science, psychology, sociology, social work, something related to what they want to combine that RD with in the future, if they'd rather go and do that first, there are going to be programs that will certainly accept people that already have a master's degree. They already have the hardest part done. There are going to be supervised practice programs that will work with you. There are some that are already set up, like the University of Michigan, where they are only accepting people that already have master's degrees. But then more local, um, the programs are setting it up to where they will certainly open the door for someone that has that master's box checked off and they just have to get their hours done and be an intern. Um, the only thing I kind of preface that with is you learn everything for the RD exam while you're here at LSU. And that's what you study when you take the RD exam. Going and being an intern and doing your graduate work kind of solidifies the information a little bit more in your head. But the further you're out from senior year in MNT and medical nutrition therapy, that is changing, ever changing uh, as the science improves. And so if it's been five or more years since you've, you know, from your undergrad and you finally finish your master's and then you're ready to go do your internship, you might be asked to retake uh, some undergraduate classes, especially medical nutrition therapy, because it does change so much. I mean, when I graduated in 2013, it changed literally six months later. And all of a sudden there was this whole nutrition focused physical exam. And now we're touching people. And I was like, I was not trained to touch people. And I still don't know how to do that because I've never gone and do, done the training because I'm not in practice anymore since I'm here. And so it does change that fast sometimes. And so I like to say, if you're sticking within the, you know, the, the next couple of years, if you take a year and a half to go do a master's and then you apply the, I don't think it's going to be um, that big of a deal. It's just more, how is that fitting into your life, your budget, all the things. And so here at LSU, like I said, completing our program gets those two, first two things done as far as the undergraduate degree and the DPD and getting the verification statement. 
Um, when you get to junior, maybe senior year, and you're taking 3025 with me, that's where I go through with you how to handle this whole process of applying, how to put the items together for your application um, as far as personal statement, resume, if there's anything else that we need to do, um, interviews, video interviews, things of that kind. Um, I go through everything so that it's not as daunting of a process. And then usually if you take a junior year, you start to see gaps in things that you're missing with regard to experience, volunteering, shadowing, what have you. And then you have that next year to start filling in the gaps and, and lengthening your resume and strengthening the package, so to speak, uh, to where when you get to senior year and it's time to apply, you're confident going into that, into that decision. It also allows you to investigate programs a little bit earlier than maybe you would expect. Uh, so you can kind of keep up with programs as they might change, um, feel out the vibe on programs over a year or two to make sure that you're applying to places that you would really want to go to and that you would really enjoy being there. And then during senior year, uh, obviously you, you get more exclusive access to me. I make myself a little bit more readily available for the seniors when it comes time for internship application uh, season. And so I do different trainings and boot camps with just the seniors to kind of refresh them on things, update them on any changes. We're going through a huge change in the application process this year that I'm teaching them on. And I am available to the seniors to help read statements, look at resumes, chat through things, make decisions about where you're going to apply, um, all the things. Um, I am here for you for that. And so how good are we at this, at doing this? Um, our internship match rate is 100% for the last three years. The national average is about 70, 75%. It might've went up a little bit this year. Um, that is an, a testament to the extra hard work that I put in to be a really awesome DPD director. Does every DPD director do what I do? No. I know that for a fact because my own DPD director doesn't do half the stuff that I do. And so I really enjoy working with the students in this capacity because I like to see you succeed. Uh, I want to create awesome graduates that go off to other programs and make LSU look good. That, that makes future generations of, of students to wanna come here. And then we're sending awesome graduates out into the workforce. And so a lot of the RDs in this area um, either went to LSU for their undergrad, or if they're a little bit older, they were here for their masters. And back when we had an internship, we no longer have one. We, um, long story for another day. Uh, if you ever want to know, I think I I, I, I tell that story in 3025, but um, we are considered one of the top DVD programs in the country. We don't have an official ranking, but everyone I talk to tells me that. And so I just kind of take it and roll with it. Uh, what it's based on, I have no idea. I'm gonna hope it's our success and our marketing and the fact that I put myself out there as much as possible as kind of the face of the program, put our students out there and their success as much as possible to really make it clear that uh, when you're seeing those you know, SEC commercials that you're thinking of nutrition, hopefully one day they'll ask us to be in the commercial. And so we do have a website. It is in the process of over the next six months, we're gonna get a brand new uh, website that's better integrated into the lsu.edu website. I actually start meetings on, on that tomorrow. And so this bit.ly will take you to our kind of offsite website that houses our handbook. And so if you haven't gotten your hands on that yet, I would say download a copy. It has the answers to about 90% of the questions you probably have. It has a ton of information in there. So I like to tell students, check out the handbook, read through it. If you don't find the answer to your question, shoot me an email. It could, it could be something that just is it's very random. Everyone has their own random things that they have questions about. Um, it's also great to kind of peek at our faculty. You'll see our pictures, our research areas, how to contact us, where we're located. Um, if you're interested in doing undergraduate research and getting that experience, you'd be able to see who does what and, and be able to reach out. A lot of times um, you might not encounter certain faculty members until junior, sometimes senior year. We have one faculty member that no one meets until spring of senior year. And she has like the hardest class right at the end of the program. And so um, kind of putting names to faces. So when you pass us in the hallway, you can say hi, you can stop us and ask questions, things like that. And then uh, also on the website is a sheet that talks about um, membership to the different professional organizations and how that works. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Advising, we do, we do not have required advising. 
per se, but it's highly recommended that you come see us each semester just to check in, make sure everything's going okay with your classes, make sure everything's going well with the plan. If anything changed, we have to alter the plan. We get that fixed and on file so that we know what we're doing, uh, kind of make sure we're avoiding any future issues. And so we break up our advisees by first letter of last name. And so you'll see this is how it's laid out for the entire department. And so the ones with asterisks next to their names do not use Navigate to book their advising session. So if you are listed underneath uh, one of those individuals with an asterisk next to their name, uh, they would email you and you would kind of go through either email or a sign up sheet on the door uh, to, to sign up for that. But myself and other faculty members like to use Navigate. I open my schedule for advising in October after I get back from our national conference for food and nutrition. And I'm available as much as possible. I think I advise the most students in the entire program just based off of the letters of the last names that I have. That's just, um, and then I, I absorb a lot of students that um, just feel more comfortable uh, meeting with me. And so if you are a brand new freshman and you've never technically been advised by one of us, you would go to whoever's on the list. If you are a transfer student, you are most likely advised by me, either email, in person, what have you. You would now start going to whoever you are assigned to on this list. And it might happen to be me, it might not be. But there's all of our information and this is in the handbook as well. So just some success tips to wrap up my little spiel before you have questions is that I obviously work very hard to make our students successful, but you have to meet me halfway on that. Um, and by halfway, I mean the grades side, the GPA side. I can't do your homework for you and I'm not going to alter your grades for you. And so if you can do the best that you can in the classroom and then meet me to where you take my advice on shadowing, working, volunteering, doing other things, um, really getting involved, I can help you sound like the most amazing applicant ever because I'm gonna have a lot to work with and it's not going to be bogus and made up in any way. I have that creative style to me in this whole process that can make you stand out against your other classmates where it all seemed like you did the same stuff for the last four years. You are all individuals and I help you kind of see that and make yourselves marketable in different ways towards these different programs. If you haven't already, join the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Uh, it is required for some of the upper level classes. It gives you a discount on the textbook for 2110, 3110, and a couple of other classes, I believe. I use aspects of the membership, uh, things that are behind the member wall for my class in 3025. Um, there's a scholarship opportunities, networking opportunities, volunteer opportunities, leadership opportunities for students within the academy and the different practice groups. And so we also have a club on campus, SNDA. We meet the last Tuesday of every month in the human ecology lobby. And we do our best to have a different speaker every month to represent a different area of practice, either in dietetics or in nutrition or food um, industry. Um, it's not always a dietitian so that we can show folks um, how you can still be working in nutrition and, and you know, becoming an RD wasn't a reality or can't be a reality. Uh, just so you have that hope if that's a direction that you end up going in. And then we try, we strive really hard to create volunteer opportunities. I share any work opportunities, paid or unpaid, that come across my desk. I share them with the SNDA members first. And then 24 hours later, I, I send it to the rest of the program. And so there's that added member benefit of, you know, getting first shot at some things that come up. Because a lot of times it's one spot and it goes quick, depending on who's hiring. And so you can go to that bit.ly to fill out the membership form. Um, as you are getting adjusted to LSUing, as we say, uh, start to figure out how you can get involved in the community. Sometimes that's easy, depending on the other organizations that you might be a part of. Um, Sorority Life is really big in our program, and so that kind of helps because you have to do stuff uh, for philanthropy, or you might be in other groups or other classes that are maybe service learning classes where you will start doing things uh, very naturally and then kind of seek out other opportunities on your own. As volunteer opportunities come across my desk, obviously we I focus most of the volunteer stuff with SNDA to make sure that you guys get first shot at that. And as far as work goes, um, it's not required to have paid work on your resume when you apply for these programs in the future. It's just that there is a lot of there's a lot of work to be had out there right now. We're actually in a, in a place in our economy where a lot of people are hiring. 
um, and they especially hire students uh, just because students tend can, can be a little cheaper and a little bit more flexible in schedule. And so um, I highly encourage students to get paid work. What separates paid work from volunteer is that when you're paid, you're paid to um, a standard. And so you're being um, evaluated on whatever your job description says you're supposed to be doing. And at some point you'll get evaluated, maybe you'll get a raise or you'll get feedback. You'll take that feedback, self-evaluate, become better at what you do. You might get promoted in that way, depending on what, um, like if you go into the restaurants, you start as host and then you work your way up to server, up to supervisor, those sorts of things. And so it isn't difficult to get paid work. Um, some students, their parents ask them not to because they want them to focus on class or they just have other things going on um, or a really good opportunity that comes across um, their desk that is happens to be unpaid. Experience is experience, but it'd be nice for you to get paid while you're gaining this experience. So look for things that you could get paid for and kind of see what's out there for you. We also have multiple networking opportunities through the Baton Rouge Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which I'll talk more about in a second, but we have um, our own kind of local district that's underneath the umbrella of the academy. That's for Baton Rouge and the surrounding kind of 10 parishes. I am in my third term as president of that organization. So if you ever have questions about brand, I am the person to come talk to. I plan all the events and all of the speakers for that. So that is geared more towards RDs as far as continuing education goes, but we invite students to be members and to come to all of the events. And we do have an event this Wednesday, September 14th at five o'clock at Red Stick Social. Uh, we'll just have appetizers and hang out and uh, kind of meet the new interns that are living in town now and all the new RDs and RDs that have been here for a little while. And then as you start to get comfortable, start to seek out dietitians. If you meet them at networking events and whatnot, reach out to them. See if you can arrange shadowing opportunities and those, they can be as short as a couple of days into a more longer term, you know, once a week, every week for a year, that sort of thing. Um, it varies depending on the dietitian and what they're able to have at their facility as far as shadowing or what they can handle personally, um, depending on what they're doing with their job. And so here's more information about SNTA. Dues are only 20 bucks a year. Uh, we will have our meeting at the end of this month. I believe Sports Nutrition is coming to talk to us, LSU's Performance Nutrition. And so um, that's the bit.ly if you would like to join. And then within SNDA, we started a couple of years ago, an exclusive mentoring program within SNDA for SNDA members called Tiger to Tiger. And freshmen and sophomores and, and newer students to dietetics can get mentored by juniors and seniors who have been around for a little while so that they can help you navigate our program and everything that goes on in preparing yourself for the next step after graduation to make it not seem so scary. And you make friends and expand your network and become more confident in this program and then become a mentor as you proceed through the program later on. And so we're actually launching the application information for that this week. So pay attention to your email for that. And then here's some, just some more information about Baton Rouge um, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. If you're interested in joining, there's the bit.ly at the bottom of the screen there. It's only $10 a year for students. Um, so all of the information is on that bit.ly form. And then just to throw this in here, if you're interested, I do have a YouTube podcast going all in, get the edge you need to succeed. I started this podcast during uh, COVID to expose LSU students to these different graduate programs and supervised practice programs. And so it, there's 96 episodes of this uh, program now. I'm going to preface that a lot of the programs that were on the podcast are changing details about their programs. So some of the episodes might be a little out of date but there's a lot of different um, episodes with alumni from the last two senior classes of LSU talking about their experience. There's professional development type um, episodes, uh, my advice episodes. I'm actually gonna start doing episodes with alumni as they're finishing up their internships this year and this spring. So have filming one next week with someone that's graduating in December for, with her uh, master's of public health and her internship. And so, I try to have episodes every one to two weeks. It just kind of depends on what's going on. I won't be doing any more episodes promoting, exclusively promoting any programs as that is now a conflict of interest with the fact that I direct the graduate program here at LSU. But I do provide students opportunities 
to meet with program directors outside of that. Um, we're going back this fall to having an LSU exclusive only internship fair. Uh, so far, I have seven local uh, Louisiana programs that will be coming to campus in November to meet with students and talk about their programs, kind of a fair style. Uh, this was something I started right before COVID and then th then came the podcast and now we're going back to um, in-person because it's, it's just a it's nicer to meet a program director face to face and kind of feel out how how that how you think you vibe with them and they usually bring their interns some of their interns with them depending on uh, where the program is located so i'll be sending out information about that in the coming weeks that is the social media for snda and so within the department of nutrition and food science we don't have social media pages because um, they're just kind of a pain and they get regulated by lsu and the ag center and so the loophole is to use social media through the student club because campus life at lsu doesn't check our um, not that they're not that we're doing anything bad they just don't police our social media as um as it could be and so when things are happening within the department i'll tend to post on the facebook life page on the instagram page um, and of course anything that's going on with regard to job opportunities volunteer opportunities stuff within the club things we have going on with the mentoring program all of that gets advertised um, on snda and then i tend to share things from the brand instagram on snda so that you're always informed about what's going on with regard to that group Hi. Okay. Um, I was wondering, since you've talked about like being certified in like the state of Louisiana, where we choose to get our master's and our internship, does that determine what state we would be certified in? So registration is national. So that's okay. not a problem. So your licensure will be wherever you end up working. And so okay. you could stay here and do your master's and whatever, and then go off to California, where you don't actually have to get licensed, or you could go up to another state, and it's all based off of the state. So you're not you're not uh, confined by where you do your internship with regard to okay. licensure, which is nice. All right, well, I will wrap it up. Thank you for joining me and for watching me at home. If you have questions, reach out to me on my email, emckinley1 at lsu.edu. And I look forward to seeing you throughout this school year. And seriously, email me if you have questions. I love to answer them. And I can't wait to meet you if I haven't met you already. Bye. Thank you.